it's the bloody hollow lens, or hollow lens as we say in the UK. Um, okay, first thing I've got to admit to you, we were going to do uh, uh, an unboxing video, but we kind of got too excited and already unboxed and used the device for about 48 hours. So, <laughs> apologize about that, we kind of used it without you, but we can. this is kind of like an unboxing video. Okay, so the Microsoft HoloLens, what is it all about? Um, if you don't know, I've put a link down the bottom, shows you like the commercials and a few of the little links I'm going to put down there. Kind of gives you an idea of what I can do. Um, go away, watch those, watch those videos and then come back and then I can kind of go briefly over my experience of it over the last 48 hours. Um, so go on, just don't get distracted by cat videos. Okay, I assume you're back by now, if you came back at all. Uh, anyway, let's let's get to unboxing so I can show you. So here is a nice little box, by the way. A graphic box. Nice little case. The HoloLens. There it is. Nice little sturdy little case. Don't want to drop this thing, so I've got to be careful. So here we are. That's unbox. There you are. It's the HoloLens. It's all in this little thing just to keep it all together. You have this uh, nice little posh tissue Microsoft has given you when you get emotional for seeing holograms for the first time. Nah, it's actually cleaning off the lens. And yeah, make sure you clean off your lens, otherwise it kind of affects the sensors around there. Nice little menu, uh, uh, manual here. Uh, it's kind of short, you know, it's, got, it's, it's kind of big, but you know, it's actually short. They've, they've actually done a really good job when you're first setting up the device of kind of teaching you the gestures and, and going through it with you. USB, charger, oh, let's try and get this thing out, this is the other nose piece, let's put this down, I don't want to drop it, okay, let's get this thing, here we go, there's the other nose piece, there's another nose piece on the device that comes with it, I actually prefer this one, it's a little bit longer, fits more comfortably for me, but there's a shorter one in there, works kind of nicely, you've also got your little bands in here, and what these are for is to actually go across your head and attach your device. If you're moving around a lot and you're finding that it's that the hollow lens is kind of moving a bit, um, put this on, should keep it a little bit more sturdier. And then we've got the device itself. The beautiful hollow lens. Here it is. So the obvious thing, here's your, your waveguides here. So you've got like the I think it's four lenses on here. Yeah. It looks like, oh well there's three, yeah I've seen the three, red, green, blue uh, lenses on there. They're the things that obviously bring in light from reality and then add and inject uh, your, uh, you know, the holograms onto your reality. It's pretty sweet actually. It really is sweet. And I'll talk about the field of view later. I know a lot of people seem to be going on about that. They know about the whole lens. Go, oh, you know, the field of view, field of view. And I'll explain what my experience is of it. Obviously you've got your... Um, uh, your spatial mapping cameras here, two sets right here, and they're pretty sweet. Um, when you kind of first turn on, not turn on the whole lens and it starts mapping your environment, it does this kind of matrix style, 3D mapping kind of overlays a grid. Looks pretty cool. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, don't realize what it can do, it basically if you were to have a virtual ball, uh, the whole lens understands that the table is here. It's mapped the table and the walls. You could bounce that virtual ball off the wall or you know, throw it down and it'll kind of roll off, so it just kind of maps the whole environment. Really cool, actually. You've got to kind of see it to really to understand how it's doing it. Set of microphones here. And on that note, when it comes to the microphones, uh, they have the voice commands on this thing. It's pretty awesome, pretty sweet. I kind of wondered when I first put this device on uh, whether it would understand my Cardiff Welsh accent. Um, and it did, perfectly. Uh, I then handed the device to, uh, to an American colleague of mine understood his accent perfectly uh, without any changes at all so I'm really impressed by that. Um, you've got your IR and your, uh, I think it's HD camera in front of here. I don't know if you just saw from the commercial then, you know, that you can actually, people can actually see what you're seeing and interact with your environment. So the collaboration of this thing is bloody awesome. You can both put two hollow lenses on and everyone see this, you know, the same thing, same environment. Or someone, you know, miles and miles away can actually see what you're seeing and kind of manipulate your environment, so that's really important. Spatial speakers there, or audio speakers. I was actually really impressed. I don't know if it's a it's um, a placebo effect I'm getting about this spatial sound, 
but it didn't feel like so much it was coming from, uh, you know, whether it was coming behind, left, right. It actually felt like some of the holograms were making sounds like below or above, you know, left, right. So I don't know if that's placebo. I want to prove that out. Whether it's just extremely sweet sound coming from this thing. Uh, buttons here. Got your volume. The concave and convex buttons here. That's really cool when you're kind of feeling, trying to feel around. Brightness on this side. And obviously then you've got the charge here and the power on button here. It's a sweet device. So how do you interact with the device? As I suggested before, it's um, uh, voice. You can do use voice. You can use gestures. You know, air tap. So that's almost like a click. It's also gaze as well. So wherever you're gazing, think of that as like your mouse cursor. So wherever you're gazing and then do a click, um, it, basically that's that's how you kind of interact on the balloons. And there's other things you can do with it as well. You can uh, connect to a wireless keyboard. Would suggest that if you're typing a lot, you know that clicking, gazing, clicking can become a bit tired. Um, you know, tiring as you've got that kind of virtual keyboard that's come up here. But you also have this clicker as well, so it kind of represents your air tapping. Um, some people have used the device, get a little bit, say they got a little bit frustrated with the drag. It is one of those things you kind of have to use over time. If you if you only you only use the device for about half an hour, you kind of might find it a little bit frustra uh, frustrating as you kind of rush into the demo. I found that uh, you know after day, you know day half a day day using it, that air tapping and the blooming and what have you actually became quite natural. Um, so yeah, that's how you interact with the device. Sweet device, honestly, honestly. So, what was what was my experiences? What were my initial experiences when I first turned on? You first turn on, you have the collaboration. It, that is actually, you know, even with the collaboration, uh, not the collaboration, the um, uh, the the initial setup. So you're kind of calibrating. That's the word, calibrating your eyes to the device. And even that looked actually pretty sweet because they're kind of like holograms in front of you. That initial experiences, you knew you were about to see something special. Uh, then it, go, it kind of goes into uh, you know gesture training and what have you. Like I said, it's it's actually pretty sweet. It goes through that. Then you set up your account, and, and that's where really having a wireless key keyboard would be kind of like you know useful for that because I've got an extremely long password. Um, and then you just in your world at that point. It's kind of like standing in your own desktop. Um, I know that sounds weird, but it's all your icons, and this is where the spatial mapping comes in. All your, you know, all your, your apps, your Windows 10 apps, you can kind of pin to your walls and kind of organize in your own house where all these apps are going to be. Maybe you've got games in your living room and kitchen apps, you know, cooking apps in your kitchen. Um, I never thought I'd be uh, asking people where, where I put uh, Microsoft Edge or, you know, them responding, oh, you left it in the front room or, you know, where, you know, where I'd put Windows, the Windows Store. Yeah, you left that on the desktop, you know. Um, on, your, on, your, on your desk, because seriously, you can just kind of pin things to your desk or pin things to your walls, um, and you can sometimes lose where you've, where you've actually put, put, your, uh, put, your, put your applications, which, by the way, if you ever want them back, you just bloom and they'll be in your menu, and so you can repin them wherever you want to. Um, so if anyone's, anyone who knows me and seen my desktop, it's a bit messy, so I've pretty much covered this, this whole area with holograms. Uh, we currently have a, a, a pizza eating chimp right by there um, and talk about psychological effect I actually walk around it sometimes when I'm not even wearing the whole lens so it can definitely be psychologically immersive uh, if people are complaining whether it's visually immersive you know what it can be it can be is the answer um, it can actually be and uh, let's talk about that let's quickly talk about the field of view um, some people have said it's really really small really you know it's it's about a 15 inch monitor from your screen um, I find it in my own thing, it's kind of like, for me, it's kind of like that. So I don't know if it's a subjective thing. It's kind of like that in my eyesight. Um, which is actually more than enough, more than what I expected. Uh, and I actually handed it to a couple of colleagues that basically had not really had much, um, did not really know much about the, the HoloLens uh, and had not been influenced by us techies. said, oh, the field of view is so small. Um, and they didn't notice it. They didn't mention anything. They just got immersed within those within those hol holograms. They didn't have the expectation that we have uh, as techies. You know, oh, it needs to be much bigger. Would I like to see it be a little bit bigger? Maybe. Maybe about 25% on the horizontal and about 33% on the um, 
uh, on the vertical. But as is, it's still more than capable, and you can find yourself being immersed into it. Yeah, it's not only peripheral vision. For instance, they've got the Hollow Tools app, which kind of takes you to Machu Picchu or Rome. Um, and, uh, you know, you literally just stand in there in Rome. It's kind of like a 3D, you know, they've got obviously done a 360 video of the, uh, you know, different places in Rome and different places in uh, Machu Picchu. And you do actually get, you kind of block off. It's almost like you mentally block off you know, the reality around it as you're looking around. So, yeah, I've got really, at the present moment, being a dev device, I've got no complaints about the field of view. Maybe it could be a little bit, maybe a tad bit bigger. But, um, but for those people that haven't really experienced it, have no expectations, you know, when, you know, I had my son, for instance, I brought it back and I had my son uh, look at Galaxy Explorer, amazing, I mean, the amazement on his face, he's a, you know, an older teenager, a young man now, so nothing impresses him, but this, kind of his face lit up, it was, it was a great experience to see that again. Um, and to also watch him kind of get out of the way of the moon as it kind of shot, shot around him while this virtual Earth was in front of his face. So, yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, the feel of you, I, it's workable, without doubt, without doubt. It's beautiful, actually. It is beautiful. On, the, on another note, the other complaint normally people, you know, bring up, well, you know, it's $3,000 and what have you. And that's what you have to put into perspective. It is a dev kit. Um, if you put, if you kind of like relate it to other dev kits out there, you know, for instance, game consoles, PS2, PS3, PS4, Xbox, Wii, um, you could you could look up to as much as thirty grand per dev kit uh, at the time because it is a dev kit. <laughs> okay, um, kind of did a amateur film and error then. I thought I put my four gig, uh, thirty two gig card in, but I ended up putting my four gig card in, so I was just kind of like it shut off and I was just ranting on for forever then. Uh, like if I noticed. So anyway, where was I? Um, the dev kits, the commercial kits. The commercial kits, obviously, you know, a commercial device will probably be cheaper. Um, and if you put the, you know, if you compare to other dev kits, um, uh, the price of Hololens compared to those others, it's, it's a lot cheaper. And what you get for it, I'm really surprised as well. It feels more than just a dev kit. I mean, it's it's definitely a rounded product without doubt. But you know. That's subjective, I suppose. One last thing um, about the psychological immersion, and we all kind of agree with this, that after you've had the device on for a little while, more than an hour or so, and then you take the device off, you, you almost expect to see, you know, uh, the, the Edge browser on the wall, or, you know, your Microsoft Store, or your apps around you. You almost expect to see them. You almost expect to see the, uh, the chimp that's eating the pizza in your hallway. So that's, uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Well done, Microsoft. Um, so we'll quickly try to drop the device on, just show you how I put the device on. Because when you first kind of first get it, your, your temptation is to not even try and adjust it and just scrape it across your head. It's not fun. So what I tend to do is first of all push down. Temptation to kind of pull this, but I wouldn't do that. You know, expand it back here as much as you can, as much as you think you need to, and then just put it down. You got a little band at the back here, a little adjuster. Tight, tight enough, you know, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't feel too uncomfortable. Uh, if you're getting a letterbox effect, then you you probably got it on wrong. Uh, so you need to kind of adjust it slightly until you kind of feel, see the whole uh, square field of view kind of thing. Um, that's the other thing as well, don't push it too hard. My temptation was my first time to just like really push it against my face. And then with little marks here, you don't need to do that at all. You can kind of just adjust it out. Um, and yeah, there it is. You kind of adjust back. It's pretty sweet. And then take it off, same thing. Make sure you, un you know, undo it completely and then bring it off. See if you're scraping it across your head. So anyway, uh, just to wrap up, uh, I'm really impressed with it. I really, really am. Uh, it's been kind of a privilege to, to have been used, to be able to use this over the last 48 hours. And literally as a solution developer and as a coder, um, I can tell you now, I'm, I'm kind of almost overwhelmed with the number of solutions that um, I can come up with with this device. And if you are a coder, and as soon as you try this device, you will. You'll be overwhelmed with the things that you know you'll be able to do from gaming to, you know, from right away to industrial solutions. It's, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic device. I know this is just a really quick, quick video. I didn't really go into too much depth, and uh, maybe in the next video I'll show some, you know, mixed reality. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free, post them in the comments down here. Uh, I'll answer them, that'll help me kind of put the next next video out there and what the theme will be. 
So anyway, uh, thanks for listening. This is the bloody all lens. <laughs> hey, okay, even though I said I was going to post some mixed reality in the next video, I thought I'd give you some tr uh, a little bit of a treat of this uh, uh, augmented reality here. So right in front of me I've got the Microsoft Edge browser attached to the wall. Um, as you can see, you've got Netflix, you've got the full works. If I was to play Netflix right now, it would be like a giant TV screen here on the wall. I've got some of my icons, my games, Galaxy Explorer. Down on my table here, I've got, you know, the uh, Hollow Toolkit, make little objects and all that, 3D objects, and uh, Hollow Tours. That's the one that takes you to Machu Picchu and Rome. And over here, I've got some uh, the settings and the, the store, some more games and what have you. Uh, about the viewport, yeah, I'm comfortably fitting in Microsoft Edge. At this point, you know, I'm seeing the top and obviously down to the bottom of it and the the, uh, the sides. But obviously it's it's small, you know, the viewport I'm seeing is a little bit smaller. Um, like for instance, I'm not seeing at this point, I am just about seeing the top of uh, the Galaxy Explorer project. So, yeah, to the top of the Microsoft Edge. And but like I said, I'm completely fitting in horizontally. Uh, right the way down here, you see, this is the little geese I was talking about. The pizza eating chimpanzee. That's pretty cool. And on that note, by the way, I'm seeing a much better resolution than you. Um, I think it's just the way the video records. And I kind of notice when I'm kind of put my hands in, it seems like it's behind instead of front. But to me, it's actually in front of the. Uh, my hand appears in front of the hologram. So again, that's just the way it records. I think. So hey, no worries. Uh, hope this gives a better picture of what I was talking about earlier. So. See you later.